I heard we're going to Ape Island. Yeah, to capture a giant ape. I wish we were going to Candy Apple Island. Candy Apple Island? What do they got there? Apes, but they're not so big. Hello again. Welcome back. And I am officially on spring break. And I could not be happier about that. And to kick it off, uh, continuing March at the Movies with uh, with this one. And uh, this is a good one to see. Cause some days, after some weeks, you just want to see a giant monkey movie. And man, this was good. Okay, this was fun. Let me, let me stress that. This was a fun freaking movie. You know, this is... This is everything that's advertised. I mean, there's not much, you know, special or, or unknown about it. You get exactly what you kind of were promised. And uh, they deliver that in spades, and I'm really happy about it. I think what I appreciate most about this film is that it gets right what so many other Kong movies get wrong. Um, there have been, I, I'm trying to think. And I'm believing there's been four or five Kong movies that I know of, not including ones made in, like, Japan with the guy in the really bad suit. I know there was the original King Kong, uh, then they did it again in the late 70s, 80s, somewhere in there. Uh, and then, then they did a sequel to that one called King Kong Lives, and then, of course, Peter Jackson did his uh, bloated version, and, and now they've done this one. And what all those other ones got wrong is that they were trying to be remakes of the original. Uh, with the exception of King Kong Lives, which was a sequel to a crappy remake of the original. But they were all starting from that basic point that we can make the original better with more technology. And despite the limitations of the stop motion format, despite the somewhat downright racist elements of it, because it was made in like the 1920s, um, despite a lot of that, the original King Kong is still the original frickin' King Kong. You can't top it. Special effects make it better, but you can't do better than the original Kong. Just like they've tried for years to, and they're going to try again apparently, to redo uh, Dracula and Frankenstein and the Wolfman. And yeah, there have been renditions that had better special effects. There have been renditions that have been closer to the source material. But there's only one Bela Lugosi Dracula. There's only one Boris Karloff Frankenstein. And to try to remake the same thing, even with better special effects and maybe with closer to the source material, you're never going to do that. And this film wisely does not try to do that. It tells a new and a different story. Which is something this franchise, I guess you could call it, has desperately needed. It, it has a lot of the same beats. You know, and I think that's smart. Like, it, it, it's kind of like... I'm trying to figure out how to describe this movie. There are a couple films that come to mind that you can compare it to. And for, so there, for what I'm talking about now, I think, ironically, the best thing to compare it to are the new Planet of the Apes movies. Yes, shocking, I know. Wherein they have the spirit of the original. They know what made the original work. But they're not trying to remake the original. They're paying homage to it in certain places, but they are not just trying to do the same thing and this one again what I love it pays homage there are beats in it that you recognize as being part of a Kong film there's the Kong fighting the aircraft there's uh, Kong fighting monsters on Skull Island there's people lost on Skull Island there's the beauty and the beast aspect to it but you know there's the mounting a mysterious sea expedition there's the guy who know who somehow found out about this mysterious island, but is hiding the real reasons he's going there. All these beats are there, but they're done 
differently than they ever have been before. They're not just trying to copy the original, they're doing something new, and I really like that. Um, on top of that, I've got, I gotta give this a shout out. If nothing else gets you into the theater, um, the cast they've assembled for this is just, this is one of the best casts I've seen in a long time. You've got some great, great actors. You know, Tom Hiddleston, you know, showing that he can do something other than Loki, which is fantastic. I, I, I've heard rumors that he's kind of been, he may be in line to be the new James Bond, and I'd be fine with that. Uh, Brie Larson, who's an up-and-comer. I say up-and-comer, she's got an Oscar already, but I don't think a lot of people know her yet, I, but they're going to in a couple years when she plays Captain Marvel, who's one of my favorite comic book heroes, so I'm really looking forward to that. Of course, you got, you know, Samuel L. Jackson, you know, one of the, the hardest working actors on the planet. You got, uh, and John Goodman, a guy that somehow has not gotten an Oscar or in a Marvel movie yet. And I think they need to fix both of those. We need to get him an Oscar and we need to get him in a Marvel movie. And then you got John C. Riley, who John C. Riley steals the show in terms of the human actors. He does a great job. He's so funny and so natural. You know, I love John C. Riley. I think he's I think he's a great performer and I, I love I love him in just about anything he's in, even if I hate the movie. Um, and there's a lot of other guys in it who uh, who I don't know necessarily, whose names I don't recognize, but they all do a nice job. Um, really, the film that this reminds me of the most, ironically, is Predator. This film is like the best Predator movie since the original Predator. And that's another series that they keep trying to remake and trying to redo. And you just can't capture that same feeling. This one does that. What This one is so weird in the way it's filmed because it's filmed in a style that, it's, again, this is why it reminds me of Predator. Um, it feels like you're watching a Vietnam movie. You know? Everything about it is filmed like uh, a very stylized Vietnam movie, like, you know, uh, Apocalypse Now and that kind of thing until the freaking monsters come out. And then you're like, okay, this is weird. <laughs> um, and I really, I, I like that aesthetic. I like that they kind of honed in on something. And said, again, something different. It said, okay, we're not just going to make the same movie. Let, let's make a Vietnam movie, but then throw a giant, you know, ape into the mix. You know, and just see what happens. Um, I would have liked, I only have two real complaints about this. Um, I would have liked if the, the supporting cast were a little bit more flushed out. Um, and, you know, like, a, it's a very, very rare breed of horror film where the supporting characters feel like main characters and you never know who's going to buy it. Um, but, you know, in this one, you know, again, they kind of have that same problem of, you know, you know kind of which ones are going to get it, you know, just, um, so there's that minor problem. The only really big problem I have with it is that the main, the the monsters, the skull crushers or the skull eaters or something, or what John C. Riley calls them, um, they're they're pretty uninspired in in terms of movie monsters. And I find it funny that you know with CGI now and what you can do and being bound literally by nothing by what you can put on screen these days that we get some pretty boring looking monsters. You know, uh, I had kind of the same problem with the, the, the monsters in Godzilla, uh, which we're gonna talk about here in a second. Um, you know, those were just very dull looking. And then, then like compare those to the monsters in Pacific Rim, which were real, which were simple, but original and cool looking and had cool powers and did cool things, you know? Um, yeah, these ones just don't feel all that special. They're supposed to be these big bads, and they're really not. You know, they're really not that great. Um, but that being said, the CGI in this is really astonishing and really well done. Kong looks freaking amazing, and they do a really great job, not just with the you know, the, the fierceness and the facial features, but in those moments when you're supposed to kind of see the, 
almost human soul in it, you know, kind of like they did in the original and like they tried to do in the Peter Jackson one. Um, they sell those moments really well too, and very subtly. You know, it's a subtle it's a subtle performance, and I really liked it. It was, you know, the computer animation was top notch. Um, so uh, so yeah, this this is just phenomenal. The only the only other maybe kind of issue I have with this, uh, okay. Again, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. I'm laying seeds. I'm planting. I'm planting clues. You know, just like the movie does. Um, so again, this is from the the studio that brought you the more recent Godzilla. Or oh wait, Godzilla's in this movie, as I like to call it. Um, and it has a little bit of the same problem as that one in that you don't spend a lot of time with Kong. You spend it with the with the humans, but where this one is way, way, way better than the original, than not the original, the, that Godzilla movie from a few summers back, is that one. This movie's fun, and this movie's fun from like start to finish. There's it's just a really fun film. That one was dreary and dull and trying to be too serious, and it didn't work. The second thing that where this one is better than that is that this one the humans you were spending time with were actually entertaining and fun and you know were you know characters we wanted to follow instead of Captain Quicksilver and his wife and their child who was one of the children of the corn you know so while you spent a lot of time with the humans you you didn't mind it as much and when Kong shows up it's pretty freaking impressive you know, so it's not like, again, it's not like they did with, they did it a little bit, but it's not as bad as they did with that Godzilla movie, where it's like, Godzilla's here, and we cut immediately away to what, see what Captain Quicksilver is up to, you know, so we didn't, it didn't do that to you. Um, so yeah, this movie did a really great job, and I really enjoyed it. Good way to start spring break. I'm planning on seeing a lot of movies over spring break, and this was a good one to start off with. But I gotta talk about this. So this is I'm getting into spoiler territory right now. So if you haven't seen the movie and you want to see the movie, um, cut this here and come back afterwards because um, it involves the end credit sequence. Because of course there's an end credit sequence because everybody wants to be the Avengers. And how ironic you have at least four people who are either in the Marvel Cinematic Universe or about or about to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in this film. So, and of course, it wants to be its Marvel movie. So, you know, go go away and then come back if you don't want to be spoiled. Anyone else, you've been warned. So we get the end credit sequence. And in it, yes, the rumors are true. They are trying to link, they have linked this King Kong movie with the Godzilla film they made a few years back trying to build their own cinematic universe because everybody's got to do that. Um, and I had two reactions. My first one was, ah, oh, shit, really, we're doing this? Because, you know, just because it works for Marvel doesn't mean it's going to work for you. DC has been proving that fairly consistently. Um... But a couple things. Um, by the end of the the credit sequence, of the end credit sequence, while my initial reaction was "Ah, shit, really," my next reaction was this kind of, and it was a surprise to me. I really was shocked from it to go, "Oh, that's cool." So, but only if they make the movies like this one. Only if they can they make the new Godzilla movie like this one and not the snore fest it was before you know then uh, then maybe I'll be on board with that and it didn't make me as mad when I thought about it because really if you go back the Godzilla movies were kind of the Avengers before the Avengers because the Avengers films are not the first ones to have a shared universe and a shared continuity Technically, and I think I maybe if I'm wrong about this, you can let me know. The first ones to actually do that 
were the Universal monster movies. The original Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, all of those actually share a universe because they did movies where they met up. You know, and, you know, uh, they were all kind of linked together by uh, uh, Lon Chaney Jr. as Lawrence Taubert, the Wolfman. So now, Universal, again, wanting to do their own frickin' Avengers film, are going to do, are going to kind of reboot their classic monsters and recombine their universe. And we're going to get the first one of those in that really shitty-looking mummy movie with Tom Cruise. So they did it first. Then the Godzilla movies did it, because Godzilla, Rodan, and Mothra all had their own movies originally. And then they decided to combine them. And that's where you get, you know, the Godzilla cinematic universe. All you know, the 30 some odd films that, you know, made up uh, his world. And it, and King Kong was a part of that. There is a Japanese Godzilla versus King Kong, in case you didn't know. So, while my first reaction was kind of a groan and a really, we're going to do this. God. Um, I got to admit, there's a part of me that goes... All right, if they're, if they're like the King Kong movie, I'm down. But if they're like that Godzilla film, so dour, so self-important, so just dull and draggy and taking themselves too seriously, you know, in other words, in other words, I just thought of this. In other words, if this, if this series wants to be the Marvel movies, then they need to follow this King Kong movie's model, which is more like the Marvel movies fun, entertaining, having characters you can relate to, but that you want to see more of. And not like the Godzilla movie, which was like the which is like the DC movies. Dour, boring, missing the point. You know, trying so hard to be serious. It's a movie about a goddamn giant lizard. How freaking serious do you want to be? And don't give me any of this high and mighty film school crap about how, oh, the original Godzilla was actually a very deep and important film about Japanese uh, reaction to the, to the bombings of Hiroshima. That may be very true. That may be very true. But do you know when Godzilla got popular? When they made him fun. When he had goofy adventures. That's when he became popular. So yes, the first one may have been a very important, very serious-minded film. But that ain't what made him popular. All right. So if they stick with the King Kong model, and I got to, and again, I got to say that end credit sequence was done really well. So if they stick with that, then I'm like, all right, you know what? I wouldn't mind seeing it. I, now I am kind of excited for the Godzilla sequel. I didn't care about the Godzilla sequel up until I saw this movie, which is sad that it needed another movie to get me hyped for its sequel. You know. Um. But yeah, so uh, again, a groan at first, but you know what? If they're like this, I'm kind of down. And I'm, uh, this movie did a lot of good for me. Um, like again, uh, I'd heard that Brie Larson had been cast as Captain Marvel, but I I had never I don't I don't think I've ever seen anything she's in. I'm sorry, I didn't see the room, you know. But uh, seeing her here, it's like okay. I want to see her as Captain Marvel. I'm ready for that. And I'm mad I got to wait like several more years for it. It's like, can, can we speed that up, please? I, I want to see this freaking movie. Just not for any other reason that I freaking love Captain Marvel. I think she's one of the best comic book characters around and one of the, definitely one of the best female characters around. So I'm looking forward to that and and her playing it a lot. And, and I'm even more kind of in the camp of Tom Hiddleston if the, if the rumors are true and you know he, he's kind of been tossed around as maybe a possibility for the new Bond, I'm down with that too. He plays it well, and I'm like, freaking hey man, um, yeah. So this movie this movie was a lot of fun. Good way to start off spring break. Um, kind of a nice continuation from the the success I've been having at the movies lately. Uh, Logan was okay, not great, but okay. Uh, really loved Table 19. Um, so we all need to cross our fingers now that this trend continues to up to Power Rangers. I really want Power Rangers to be good. I really want to like Power Rangers. So I'm hoping it doesn't suck. Um, 
Beauty and the Beast, we'll, we'll talk about that when I go see it. But, uh, but yeah, uh, pumped, good film. Uh, yeah, just nothing. I got no real major criticisms about this one. It's a blast, and you should definitely check it out if you're not going to already, because most people were going to already. All right, so I am now going to go into my apartment. I'm going to probably put my computer down gently and then fall fl face forward onto the floor and just go to sleep right on the floor. I'm not even going to freaking... Uh, oh, look at that. I can just do that. And I'm not even going to freaking uh, crawl to the bed just right there on the floor because um, I'm tired. And I have a whole week of being able to wake up when I feel like waking up. And I'm really looking forward to that. So, uh, but I plan on spending a lot of time at the movies. There's some films that came out that I didn't get to see last week that I really am planning on seeing and having a good time. And I'm hoping to convince a couple friends of mine to go to the movies with me and maybe share in some of these reviews. Something I've wanted to do with this since the start is I've wanted to do a review with another person. So I'm hoping to con a couple friends of mine into, into doing one of these with me. So that would be really exciting. Um, so anyway, I hope everybody out there is having a good spring break. Chill out. Be safe. Go see Kong Skull Island. You're not going to regret it. And until next time, drive safe, and I'll see you at the movies.